after the election. Of course, Mark McSharry, people who've watched uh, uh, elections in the past uh, perhaps know to take a lot of these pre-election uh, commitments and red lines with a, with a pinch of salt. Well, look, we have no editorial control on independent newspapers who were kind of peddling the... Uh, the idea of Sinn Féin uh, cozying up to Fianna Fáil today. All I'll say on it is nobody has been more consistent than Fianna Fáil uh, for highlighting the uh, way in which Gerry Adams and Sinn Féin do their business. So uh, it suffice to say, perhaps, that there'll be no deal now, no deal during the election, uh, and no deal after the election. The coalition between, used to be, the coalition used to be, not, not entry coalition used to be a core principle of Fianna Fáil. That was digital. Indeed it, it is. your enemies, uh, the PDs. Uh, 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 and for me, I can tell you that uh, fighting elections in terms of the honesty that it provides to the people is best done by parties putting forward their policies in a way that's coherent so that the people ultimately can decide. And look, we in Fianna Fáil will be guided by the people. Right. Let me just, um, can I just move on? Uh, because, Mark, you're with us t later today. I think you're expecting the, the, the latest draft of the banking uh, inquiry. You're a member of that inquiry. Where is all that now at the moment? Well, a huge amount of work has taken place over the course of the last week. I mean, there has been disappointment with uh, how things have evolved over the course of the last year. Uh, the restrictions that the Act have placed on both the investigators and ourselves as members. But a lot of progress has been made over the course of the last week. We're optimistic that a report will be developed. Uh, and we are hoping that uh, uh, a new draft following the work of the last uh, six or seven days will be available to us throughout the afternoon. Uh, and we can see about amendments then over the course so of the So several next members of the committee have been working on trying to rework this draft that, uh, that was unacceptable. Acceptable, uh, when it was first presented uh, a, week or, a week or more ago, and progress has been made, you understand on that? Absolutely. Uh, and what, uh, how tight then is the time scale to have something finally agreed by the committee in time to send it out so as people who are, who are mentioned in the report have a Can chance react. to respond? Yeah. I mean, ideally, we, we would like to be in that space uh, over the course of the next three days. That may not be possible. Uh, it may be a situation where we need to look for an extra week, which I think within the calendar uh, can be played with, and we haven't tapped into that just yet. But uh, I would hope that um, uh, when we see the draft later today and the findings, uh, which I mean many of us are aware of because we've been mm. liaising over the course of the last week, uh, that progress can be continued and ultimately that and we will have a report on the people's would behalf. You, would you just? I see that the camera is coming in, but just very quickly on this: would you be would you be hopeful um, that that everybody will sign up to it? Because it's talked about Joe Higgins having some reservations, maybe Sinn Féin as well. I think that uh, when you've had an act as restrictive as this one, uh, there are issues that all of us would probably have. So I think uh, hopefully everybody will agree on a report, but we may all have a little to add to it after the fact uh, in terms of views on how the process mm -hmm. went uh, and how it could be improved Just for the a, future. A, a word on this, Martina? I think there's no doubt there's going to be some report at the end of this, despite all the gloom and doom. I suppose the contents of the report and how hard-hitting, but everybody went into it knowing how restrictive the legislation that under, underpinned the inquiry was. Yeah, and uh, perhaps over-ambitious over at the outset, Philip? I think so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just, we spent five million euro, or we plan to spend five million euro on it, and I don't see what we're going to learn that we haven't already. We did predict heard this. I mean, a Leveson-style inquiry, uh, free from the electoral cycle, appropriately resourced with a two-year time frame, was the Fianna Fáil preference for this. Mm. We did go into it and give the commitment that everybody else has over the course of the last eighteen months. But sadly, uh, to an extent, we're going to reap what we sow in terms but of the findings. In fairness, I think a lot of people wanted to see whether it's uh, the governor, the former governor of, of the central bank, or Brian uh, Cowan go in there. They wanted to see them in public. They did want to see, like we had previous reports, behind closed doors and no one named. They did want to see them in public and I think the public hearings did give the public, public something and there was a huge interest in them, to well, be Leviston fair. Well, Leviston was public too. I mean, we also wanted that. Yeah. But it was free all, from it was, the electoral it was, it, I mean, it was, it was very late in, in, the life, in the life cycle of the doll to get the whole thing up and running, Martina, as well, wasn't it? Yes, but also, if you remember, even um, Mark's um, membership of it, it proved a, a contentious. I mean, there's an awful lot. To, to get all the parties in the room and to agree something like this mm -hmm. is unbelievable. I, I think many people would be shocked at the fact if they do agree rather than they don't. Yeah, and I mean, uh, perhaps uh, hopes that maybe the, the, this, this could be a model for investigating issues. I mean, really, th there's a there's a big rethink on all that, isn't there, uh, Philip? Yeah, I don't see us going down see us going down this path again for another inquiry into if God forbid we have something like this nor happening. Should we, nor again. should we. Yeah. I mean, the act uh, has been inadequate for the job at hand, and and that stems from the failure of the constitutional uh, uh, amendment. Uh, it certainly is part of it. Uh, it's certainly part of it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I say we're just we're still waiting for the and we just have news that the uh, the cabinet has signed off this morning, Mark, on uh, what is the figure six hundred and uh, sixty five million in supplementary spending uh, for health. Now I think we've managed to clarify that at least six hundred million of that was already announced, if you like, in uh, in that that, that uh, one point five billion supplementary spending just before the budget. Yeah, as has been the story of this government, we have reannouncements of, of of things they perceive to be positive. This isn't a positive, unfortunately. Just on the A and E thing uh, in Galway, the, the the story there 
clear is the fact uh, that they sought an expansion of the capital plan to include their works and it was denied on the basis that uh, either HSE or government sought a cost-benefit analysis. I mean, a cost-benefit analysis, the Taoiseach admitted himself uh, that it's uh, 250,000 people a year. It's not fit for purpose. It was built for 100. It's dealing with two and a half times the amount of patients it's built for. Mm. But this is just endemic, and we saw Deputy I mean, Adams of it, is the ready, entire so system. Is it ready to go? Because the Taoiseach was asking that question. I mean, is it, is it, has, the, has, the, has it advanced far enough down the planning process to be ready to actually get underway? If they were the seeking an expansion there. to the current capital plan, it's safe to assume that that, that is the case. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that um, uh, other contributors later on, um, uh, Deputy Fitzmaurice spoke about the whole issue of balanced regional development. And sadly, the story of government is the health crisis and the two-tier recovery. And uh, Deputy Fitzmaurice is quite right in what he raised there mm. uh, in terms of, and I was at one of them myself, the minister running around the country, uh, announcing these plans uh, about how jobs are going to be created. But all of those announcements lacked the strategic investment that are required but, but to the, attract the, and the, facilitate Bryce, uh, the beginning of industry in those areas. Uh, Bryce, well, I mean, Mark, in, in terms of the, 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 the politics of this, whether to some extent people really have a kind of despair about anybody, any of you, any government being able to really tackle these in, you know, endemic problems that we seem to have in the health service, which have gone on now for decades, well, clearly under, it's under been, lots of different governments. Clearly it's been worsening. I mean, we had the worst October uh, on record. Almost 8,000 people uh, were on trolleys during that month. Uh, there's a 15% increase since the current minister. Take What's annoying people, frankly, is Everyone knows it's difficult. Everyone knows there's money problems. But if they felt that the general management was in hand, if they felt somebody was in control, but it's the punditry and kind of chat show shows host panellist approach of, of Leo Varadkar that's really galling people. And we were speaking with uh, Fergal Hickey of the Association of Emergency uh, Medicine and, and he frankly despairs. He welcomes all these initiatives that are being announced but the reality is they're not listening to the strategic approach that's needed to be taken in dealing with the problems. Well I suppose the reality Philip is that... Uh, Leo